One of the activities in the This Is Engineering Entertainment pack is called Hexaporn, which is very much a simplified version of noughts and crosses. So we've got a 3x3 three three grid. You're going to be the white player, and these are the pawns. Just like in chess, that means the pawns can either move forward one space, or they can also move diagonally if they're taking another piece. Now there are two main ways to win. You can either get one of your pieces over to the other side, or you can block your opponent from making any future moves. So it gets a little bit confusing in the guide, so what I'd do is just talk through um, the hexapawn board, which is something that you can print out, and this is replicated inside the This Is Engineering Education guide. Um, what I've done is I've taken this, I've printed it out, and then I stuck it onto a load of empty mash boxes. And you'll notice on the front of each one, there are arrows in different colours red, blue, green and orange. And inside each of these boxes, what I have are some tokens. I've just used some small pieces of Lego, but you could use counters. Um, and that, the, depending on the arrows in there, I've got some of these tokens inside. So this one here just has two possible moves, a red and a blue. Uh, other ones, uh, maybe this one over here, there are four possible moves that could be made. So I've got four counters or tokens inside. And effectively what we're going to do is we're going to look at the way that we can program something so that it never loses. Now you're going to be the white player and you're playing against this computer which is making the moves in black. Now let's just go through a couple of worked examples. Let's imagine we move, you make your move and you decide to move one of your white pieces like this. So this one over here is where we've moved one of the pieces on the edge which is like the move made over here. Now effectively each of these is mirrored as well. So this box here represents either the, the, the left piece moving or the right piece moving and then it's like the mirror image of what's down here. Okay so let's imagine that my move is I'm going to move this one here forward. Now there are three possible moves that could happen. First of all this pawn can't move at all so that's stuck in its position. It can only take a piece if it's moving diagonally. This one here could move forward one space this one could move forward one space, or this one could take that piece. And what we have on the box over here are the three possible moves that could be made. And what we're gonna do is gonna do a bit of gameplay to see what happens if we take each of these moves. Now, let's imagine that this piece here, we're gonna go for the blue move first of all. Okay, so the blue move is this piece taking that. Okay, so we're now at this position. What I'm going to then do is think about, well okay, imagine um, I'm the white player, I could do a few things, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this piece forward, okay, and now it's the go of the computer, so looking at the options here. So what I need to do is find the box that relates to this. So I've got the two, the three black down here and the two white pieces, and looking at move two, it's this one over here. Okay, so this is the pieces that we have on the board at this time. So inside the box, I've got a red and a blue counter. So I'm just going to take these out for a sec. And we're going to think about what happens if I take each of these moves. Well, first of all, if we look at the red move, the counter goes to the other side. And that means that this is one because it's got a piece to the other side. So the red move is a good move. Okay, so we can put that back in the box. The other alternative would be that this one takes that piece and again this is now winning because it's got the piece to the other side. So that is a good move as well. So the blue option is another good option. So both of these things here mean that the computer, the person or the thing that you're playing against has won. Okay, so we're going to keep both of those tokens and the idea with using these boxes is that if there's a bad move that uh, the black player plays, we take out the possibility of that move until we have something which is unbeatable. Okay, so we'll do another example, put these back. Okay, so um, this time my first move is I'm going to move this piece over here. So I'm going to move this one to the centre, which is, we are now in this position over here. So the counters, and again this can be a mirror image as well, we can either move forward or we can take that piece. So I'm going to think, okay well, I'm going to take out my two counters, we've got the red and the blue, and we're going to see what happens if I do each move. So first of all, uh, the red move is that this piece goes over here. Okay, so that's the move of the computer. 
My next move now, because I want to get to the other side, and I can do that by taking a piece diagonally, means that now I've won and I've beaten the computer. Now the thing is, that's not a good option for the computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the red counter, I'm going to put it to one side, and that means now we've only got a blue piece left in the box. So if this situation comes up again, where the other, where I've gone first and now it's a computer second turn, the computer can't take the red move and move forward because if it does that, then it can lose. So that means there's only the red, uh, so the blue one that goes in there, and the blue one goes in, and that's now a good move. And then I need to think about, okay, well, uh, if the computer's done that, what can I do? Um, I suppose what I could do is I could make this move here. So I've taken a piece from the computer. We're going to look over here and see if we've got two blacks like that and two white ones over here. I can see that this one over here is a similar box. Uh, so this one over here, there are two options. We've got the red and the blue tokens once more. I'll just put these on top. So let's think about what might happen. Uh, let's imagine that we go for um, this move here. Okay, that all looks fine at the moment. Uh, this white piece that I'm now going to decide where to go, that one can't move, so I'm going to move this piece down here. So now let's see what happens for the next move. So it's this box over here. Uh, there are two options. Um, one of them is this move over here, but that doesn't allow anything to really happen. It doesn't make a win. But this part here, the green one, could go forward. And therefore that is a winning move. So I'm going to make sure that inside the box, I leave my green counter in. Uh, maybe let's just game play what would happen uh, if we did the other move. So the red move would be that this point takes that. Um, my next move that I'm going to decide to do is I move this one forward and therefore I win and I beat the computer. So that means what I'm going to do here is take out the red so that if we come to this box again, I'm not going to choose the red move again or the computer's not going to choose the red move and that means the computer uh, will always win by taking this move to make sure it wins. So um, this one over here, it's a little bit complicated, but basically what you can do is you can work through this several times. Again, you're kind of, uh, this is something you can do individually. You're playing the white uh, counters, the white pawns, and you're game playing each of the possibilities that there might be. And the reason that this has been chosen rather than noughts and crosses is because it's a simpler game. And what we then start to do is look at how you can maybe program something so that it becomes unbeatable. And there are games online where you can play Hexapawn, and also there's quite a few online chess games. And effectively, every time there's a move, the computer looks at all the possibilities and thinks what might happen two or three game uh, plays ahead to make sure it wins. So that's just a little bit more of a work through of Hexapawn. It does look a bit complicated, but if you take the time to uh, get some counters, to get all the match boxes, or you could use an egg, egg, an egg box with the counters inside, this is a really interesting way to look at how computers can be programmed to actually win at gameplay.